Yeah, you see us. We're there. Well, um, yeah, we see uh, a big, <laughs> just a big room. So. <laughs> okay. All right. So we, Milo, will uh, chair this session from Paris, where uh, it's high technology uh, setup, because she set up that uh, that session. So Milo, uh, I'll be there. I'll just be a, a human uh, micro carrying uh, stuff. So I just pass pass the micro to to everyone for the questions. But you're you're the boss now. Okay, thank you very much, Jean. Uh, thank you, everyone, for, for showing up. Uh, it's a shame I cannot be with you yet. I hope I will be able to join you in, in the future days, although time is running out. But okay, so this session uh, will be about applications of uh, learning uh, that can be relevant uh, for science in general. And here, the first session will be, uh, the first talk will be given by J. Long who is coming uh, to us from Princeton University. So take it away. Recording in progress. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Could you hear me? It looks okay? Yes. Okay, okay, thank you. Hello everyone, thanks for the invitation from organizers. Today I want to talk about my recent work with Jiaqun Han in flat marine institution about reinforcement learning in reproducing kernel of helpless space. Um, reinforcement learning algorithm have achieved a huge size in Go, video games, and robotics. By utilizing powerful function automations like a kernel or neural networks, the practical reinforcement algorithms can deal with problems with a huge state space and high dimension. However, with existing theoretical works mainly focus on type of setting, in which both space, both state space and action space are finite, and the sample complexity is proportional to the size of the state action pairs. To explain the practical success of reinforcement learning and the power of function optimization, we consult the reinforcement learning with kernel function optimization in this talk. Um, let's begin with a short introduction to the reinforcement learning problem. Reinforcement learning is concerned with how to maximize the expected cumulative rewards in a Markov decision process. This talk will, <clears throat> will focus on the time inhomogeneous case or the episodic Markov decision process. In this case, the length of the MDP is finite and the reward function and the transient probability vary from different time steps. An episodic MDP, <coughs> an episodic MDP consists of six components, a state space S, an action space A, an initial distribution mu, the episodic length H, a transition probability P, and the reward function R. Transition probability- Sorry. Yes, my goodness, do you have a microphone? Because the sounds is okay, but it could be better. So if okay, you just have the headsets. I need to come to my room for time. Okay, that'd be great. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> oh, yeah, so so there are something wrong. I, I used to connect that, but it suddenly disconnect. So. Oh, I see. Mm, I need to check. Sorry, sorry for inconvenience to you. No worries. I mean, if we can, if we can do better, it's it's okay. But if it's too complicated, we'll manage this way. No worries. For us, it's okay, yeah. Huh? Okay, so so you can you can go. Hello, hello. Does it come good? We hear you well. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Um, okay. So the transition probability P gives the distribution of the next state S sub H plus one, with given state S sub H and option A sub H and time step H. Reward function R gives the expected reward at H, H sub H and A sub H. The exact form of a false transition probability and the reward functions are unknown to us, but we can connect samples of them <coughs> from them with any given step state, step state action tuples. We need to decide a policy which gives the distribution of the action at any given time edge, state S sub edge, at two, to maximize the expected total reward. We denote the expected total reward of an MDPM with a policy pi as j of m and pi. Here, I sub h and a sub h are generated by the transition probability p, initial distribution, initial distribution mu, and the policy pi. We then use rho sub h, p, pi, and mu to denote the distribution of, of I sub h and a sub h generated in this way. 
Our goal is to find the optimal reward J star and the optimal policy pi star through finite samples. Uh, so we then introduce the reproducing kernel helper space, which is closely related to the kernel function optimization. Given a positive definite kernel k on s times a, we can introduce the archive term h sub k as the combination of all possible linear combinations of k sub x i under the uh, so-called architecture norm. Uh, recording that, our goal is to answer when the reinforced learning program can be solved by kernel function optimization. We are mainly focused on high dimensional problems and the sample complexity. Other complexity like computational complexity is not considered here. Mm. Although it's hard to start reinforced learning with kernel function optimization, theoretical results of supervised learning with kernel function of, of optimizations are well known. So for any k function f lying in an archive trust edge and the affixed distributions in U, one can efficiently obtain estimate head f using kernel function optimization so that half f and f is close with respect to L2 norm on the, the distribution U. Notice that the sample, sample complexity of the square learning program does not suffer from the cost of functionality. In response learning, the reward function plays a similar role with the target function in support learning. This motivates us to study a more concrete question. If the reward function lies in your arc address, what is the condition of the arc address and the transition probability to ensure that the reinforced learning problem can be solved efficiently? Compared to a super learning, reinforced learning is more difficult due to the, due to the distribution mismatch phenomena. Here, we we'll take the Q-value estimate, estimation as an example. The optimal Q-value function gives the optimal expected total reward from the time step edge to the end if the state and action at the time step edge is just S and A. The optimal policy is known to be the greedy policy of the optimal Q-value function. Now, if we have an estimation head Q of Q star, so that the L2 distance is small under a given distribution rule, then what about the performance of the grid policy of head Q? So we can use the famous performance different, different lemma as follows. Um, you can say that uh, the, uh, the difference between Q star and the head Q uh, is assumed to be small under the distribution U, and the difference between pi star and the head pi can be found by one. But here the question is that uh, the, in this inequality, uh, we involve with the, this distribution, those sub edge P had head pi and U. But we don't know the head pi before we estimate the Q hat. Because Q hat is just uh, the greedy policy of head pi. So we, we need to force to have the head Q then head pi. So is, is it possible to make the probability distribution new for estimation? And the distribution row of H, P, head pi, and mu the same. We call this, this phenomenon the distribution mismatch, which is ubiquitous in the analysis of the range of reinforced learning. To overcome these difficulties brought by distribution mismatch, we will introduce the perturbational complexity by distribution mismatch. The core idea is that although we cannot assess to the distribution row of H, P, head pi, and mu, we know that this, this distribution is a state action distribution of the MDP generated by a policy. Hence, if we can bound the distance between Q star and head Q under all state, state action distributions generated by all policies, we can bound the performance difference. To reflect this idea, we introduce the perturbational response by distribution mismatch uh, as follows. First, for any set of pi of probability distributions on S times A, we define a same norm called the pi norm on the continuous function space on S times A. But uh, at the maximum absolute value of the integer of I under the distribution row chosen from pi. Second, given a, given a general bundle space and a positive constant epsilon greater to the zero, a probability distribution mu belongs to uh, 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 a probability distribution mu on BS and BS times B. We can define the, uh, the new perturbational space with scale epsilon as B sub epsilon and mu 
uh, which is just the function space with whose uh, is that just a function whose B norm is bounded by one and L2 norm is bounded by epsilon. This is motivated by the fact that in the supervised learning in architectural class, we can efficiently obtain an estimation of the target function so that their difference is bounded on the architectural norm and small on the L2 norm. Finally, the perturbational response by distribution mismatch is just the radius of B sub epsilon and U. Um, we then gave some examples of the perturbational response. First, if pi only consists of the distribution mu, then the perturbational complexity can be bounded by epsilon. This means that without distribution mismatch, the perturbational res response is very small. Second, if pi consists of all distributions on S times A, then the pi norm becomes L infinity norm, which is used to handle the distribution mismatch phenomena in tabular RL. However, the estimation with the estimation with respect to L infinity norm in architectures may suffer from cost of dimensionality, which is the main difficulty for RL in architectures compared to tabular RL. From the definition, we can say that the scale of perturbational complexity measures the discrepancy between U and pi and reflects the error due to the fact that we don't know the state action distribution on the policy of U. We then define the reinforcement learning problem by specifying the prior knowledge of the MDP. So we want to solve an RL program whose underlying MDP belongs to a family of MDP M. We know the exact form of the family M, but we don't know the exact value of theta. In M, all MDPs share the same state space, action space, length, and initial distribution. In this talk, we only consider the case that the index set is the Cartesian product of the index set of the reward function and the index set of the transient probability, which means that our prior knowledge for the transient probability of the reward function are independent. In the part of low bound, we've assumed that the reward function lies in the unit ball of a general banana space. We are in the part of up bound, we assume that the reward function lies in the unit ball of a and architectures with kernel K. Uh, finally, we can assist to a generative simulator, which means that for any edge and the state action pair, we can observe a state driven from the weighted P sub theta conditional on H, S, and A, and the noise reward, which equals to R of H, and S, and A, plus a standard Gaussian distribution. This is for the one access to the simulator. So a general reinforcement algorithm can be viewed as a mapping from theta to the real number as, as an estimate of the optimal value of M sub theta. The following form ensures that this algorithm only depends on n accesses to the simulator. In each time, we choose a step state action tuple based on previous data. <clears throat> Then access to a simulator to get the lag state and noise reward corresponding to the table and put them into a data set. Finally, we compute an estimate of the total reward based on the whole data. Here, the, 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 the variable Uba denotes the randomness of this RL algorithm. Our, our goal is to find the best RL algorithm, which may minimize the worst case error with respect to the theta. Uh, in our paper, we count uh, two cases. One is a simple case called the uh, Lorentz transition case, uh, in which we know the transition probability, and hence the, in the index side of the transition probability only equals zero. Another case is a general case in which we don't know the transition probability, and the index side is a general set. So due to time limitations, I can only discuss the Lorentz transition case in this today, and you can find uh, the general the results of general case in our paper. We will then use uh, pi, pi of h, p, and mu to denote all possible distributions of uh, the action pair on the transition probability p and the initial distribution mu. The pi of p and mu is just the union of pi on different time steps. We define the perturbational complexity by distribution mismatch 
of an MDB family M in the case of long transition by just replacing pi by pi of p sub zero and mu, the size of all possible state action distributions, and then take infinite among all choices of the estimated distribution mu. We show that the perturbational complexity of M is a low bound of the work case error among all possible reinforcement algorithms with n samples. Therefore, this result shows that the sum complexity of reinforcement programs on the on the fam MDBT family M is related to the decay rate of a perturbational complexity with respect to epsilon. To get an upbound based on the same quantity, we introduce the fitted reward algorithm. In these algorithms, we first uh, find we first find the distribution head mu, which minimizes the perturbational complexity, and the I and then ID sample n square point n, n square points from the head queue. Each time step we access to the noise rewards on these points. We then estimate the reward function at the, this time step through a simple kernel regression. The output of this algorithm is just the optimum policy with respect to head m sub theta, which just replace the reward, the reward function in m theta by the estimated reward function. Our work shows that the performance difference can be again bounded by the perturbational complexity. complexity. Notice that the sample size in, uh, in the upper bound part is h n square, but uh, in the lower bound part is n. So our lower bound and upper bound are not match, and there is still room for improvement. Finally, we discuss some properties of the perturbational response and the perturbational complexity and the application of our results. So if we can find a distribution mu such that the derivative of all distributions in pi with respect to mu have a uniformly bounded LP norm, then the corresponding then the corresponding perturbational complexity or perturbational response decays fast. This is called a concentration coefficient assumption in the literature of the learning theory. Hence, under such assumption, we can recover the common results in the literature through our upbound. Another common assumption in the literature used to prove convergence of reinforcing algorithms with kernel function optimization is to assume the eigenvalue decay is fast. We show that the perturbational response of the set of all probability distributions is closely related to the eigenvalue decays. Since the perturbational complexity of the set of all probability distributions is the largest perturbational complex response, one can conclude that the perturbational response to get fast for any distribution size of pi. On the other hand, the right side of the first inequality can be as slow as possible, and that one can consider the hard reinforcement problem by making the side of all possible state act, uh, by making the side of all possible state action distributions in MDP closer to the side of all probability distribution. One can rule that when eigenvalue decays fast, we can expect a very good performance of reinforcement algorithms because the perturbational complexity decays fast. However, when the eigenvalue decay is slow, like in the Laplacian kernel and the neural tangent kernel on high dimensional sphere, the low bound decays, the low bound in the first inequality decays very slow. In this case, the knowledge of pi play a vital role. A direct application is that if the state space is just a single point and h equals to one, then the reinforcement problem is essentially to find the maximum, maximum value of the reward function lying in the union ball of an architecture based on value of n points. So due to this point, due to this, this uh, due to the hardness of this question uh, in real RL, if we need to handle high dimensional action space, we need to assume the decay of eigenvalue, eigenvalue is fast to break the curse of dimensionality. <sighs> okay, to conclude, the perturbational complexity by distribution mismatch gives a low bound for the error of error algorithm and the console reinforcing algorithm, a reinforcing problem. In the case of non-transition, the perturbational complexity also gives an outbound of the error of the fated reward algorithm. In the case of unknown transition, as we are not covered in the class, in our paper, 
with an uh, additional assumption on BM accuracy, uh, perturbation capacity can give an outbound for the error of the so-called fated acute ratio algorithm. And all results used uh, with the perturbation capacity generalize the existing results for faster convergence based on the assumption of the final consideration, coefficiency, or faster uh, than value decay. Finally, in our paper, we give a concrete example in which the reward functions lie in a high dimensional architecture. The transition probability is lower and the, the action space is finite, but the corresponding reinforced learning can be not solved without perspective. Of the unit. So to the time limitations, I cannot talk of, I cannot talk this example into the, in detail today. But uh, you can find this example in our paper. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. So we cannot hear the claps, but we can see the claps <laughs> from where we are. <laughs> yeah. um, so are there any questions in the audience? And here I will ask my uh, Organizers to relay what's going on in the audience. I'm on it. Okay, there are no direct. Uh, there is. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Thank you very much yes. for the talk. Sure. All right. So uh, I was wondering if there is any way around the curse of dimensionality and if you could give us a little intuition of the concrete example that you mentioned in the last slide. Oh, okay, okay, so this is all right. So the intuition is that, as I say, uh, the put, so this term can be very, can, can be taken very slow uh, in, in the kernel like uh, uh, Russian kernel or Newtonian kernel. So we can construct an, an example like that so the, the side of all probably all the action distribution is very close to the distributions of um, the distribution, the all distributions um, as time stay. So in this sense, um, the lower bound is very close to this term. And in this, this term for, for the curve as the Italian color or the Russian color, starts from the curse of infinite. So by this way, we prove the hardness of that example. Mm, is that clear? Yep, it is. Thanks. Any. <laughs> Other question? Right, I think on our side, it's, it's, uh, there is no more question. So maybe I can ask a quick question then. Okay. So, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm no expert in reinforcement planning, but uh, I think it's uh, a nice uh, study where you can have some theoretical understanding of, of those complicated, complicated uh, learning frameworks. And I was wondering from your perspective, uh, how far are the assumptions you need to take from uh, practice and whether you see that you could take any more steps closer to practice and retain some analytical uh, conclusions? Okay, so basically there are um, two major drawbacks of this work. So first is this one. We assume the possible transient probability, we assume the prior knowledge of the transient probability and the reward function uh, is independent. So this may not true in the practice. So, but, uh, and so another thing is that um, our reward function lies in the unit ball of the uh, architecture, which means that we don't know the reward function. But in practice, in my, many RL programs, we know the reward function. So uh, then in this case, in that case, we cannot, so our result doesn't hold. So I guess this is doing hold. So I think that this is to make it better. And uh, I'm try to do that, but <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Any more question in the audience? I think we're good. Thanks a lot again. So let, yeah, let's thanks to Jia again. Mm -hmm. And so our next speaker will be Mario.